our bodies are the vessels of our reality. They let us absorb the world around us as well as communicate with one another. Communication is the foundation of art, and it is in every way a sensorial experience. As we experience art, our bodies interpret the sounds, sights, and even smells as different reactions. Our reactions are a pattern of neurological processes that allow us to create an awareness of a sense of being, a feeling. I'd like you to notice the way you're sitting in your seat. Are you uncomfortable or slouching? I'd like you to be aware of your surroundings. Feel the cloth on your body as it hangs, sticks, or clings. Feel the darkness surrounding your seat and the heat of the lights on the stage. Your experience in this moment is not separate from the dancers in this theater. In fact, you are currently engaged in a nonverbal dialogue of sorts where your body and your mind are reacting to both the performers in the theater and the spectators. Our body is what allows us to process this. It lets us absorb our surroundings and project our thoughts. As speakers, performers, and observers, our experience becomes yours by way of congruency. And what I mean by congruency is that your mind and body understand what it feels like to contract, stretch, inhale, and exhale. As you watch the performer, your brain mimics these patterns. Neuroscientists have become increasingly interested in this idea, the way a spectator recreates these processes in their own minds and bodies. And neuropsychologists have even investigated the ways in which feelings are the mental expressions of body states. So, they bring us back to a sensory engagement with the world. Our brain communicates with our bodies via chain reactions, chemical and neurological signals that bring our perceptions into consciousness. So a chain reaction from the dancer to your brain and into your body, your mind recreates these sensations before body states or even actions occur. So as you watch the dancer jump, fall, stretch through space, your brain is already mimicking these very patterns. This idea, this concept, is something so immersive, it's so involved because it positions us as internally connected, a mass web of transient and interactive communications. In the past, dance was a tool to bring people together, to let them share stories or communicate ideas. Dance formed the basis of many sociocultural norms of the time, and if we look back at the history of dance, an Irish jig or a Baroque waltz, it's very easy to see how social norms were reflected through these movement styles. Dance was a method of communication to integrate social status or behavioral norms. Really, it was about telling us about who we are or who we were supposed to be in certain social contexts. We learn who we are through dance, through communication and body language. If we look back at some of the artists from the last 20th century, we can see how interested and invested they were in this idea. Visionary choreographers like Lester Horton and Martha Graham understood the social implications for dance. The contraction and release technique used by Martha Graham encouraged the viewer to look at these movements in parallel with the dichotomies of everyday life. Things like power and subservience, freedom and confinement, or simply just love and hate. Dancers, artists, and choreographers have used the body to create conversations about our world. They also use the body to bypass many of the social divisions we experience in our everyday lives. In the words of Martha Graham, the body says what words cannot.
artist or a dancer has a very important job to do. And their job is to connect us to one another. Their work, regardless of content, cannot be removed from the idea of communication. And it's not necessarily about telling a story or creating an image. But in dance, it's about the translation of thought through the body in a vast array of patterns that create a sense of feeling, an expression of perception. In a world where we are becoming increasingly isolated from one another via the onslaught of digitization and the virtual world, we're also becoming disembodied. We are physically moving away from one another and becoming detached. The power of the body to translate important sociocultural experience is becoming stifled by digital realities. Our raw interpersonal experiences are a way for us to remain human. Human in that we are present in our physical bodies. Dance, just like music, has the power to connect us regardless of race or religion, and that's because we all experience life through bodies. Bodies through space and bodies over time. We learn and we think via our bodily experience. This is why performance art is so important, because it allows us to be present in our physical world. And without it, we're pretty lifeless. If we do not continue to encourage artists, particularly performing artists, we will lose something very important that we had in the past, a way of communicating that moves far beyond the boundaries of verbal language. The body has a very powerful potential to bring us back to an organic sense of belonging and inclusion. It combines all the senses in a dynamic, interrelational context in which we can really feel what the mover is doing because we really can and do understand those processes. Art and dance is an extremely valuable tool for navigating the loss in society. It forms a beautiful synthesis between art and anthropology because it is a sincere expression of culture through a living and breathing transient art form. And we are currently in a great state of loss. A loss of social engagement and productive exchange, a loss of real-time interactions. Movement and performance art have the power to move us out of our current automated comas. This art form, among many others, must be reintegrated back as a central pillar in our society to move us out of our disembodied isolation and into a future of productive exchange. Artists, dancers, choreographers, participants, spectators, musicians, we must all look at the body as a central component in the discussion of art for the future well-being of our society. We must encourage the artists in our communities in order to stay connected to one another and attached to reality. We must push art forward as a way to experiment with our language. And we need to use the body to connect with one another, to learn from one another, and to understand one another. Thank you. Um.